Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and if you're like me, you have the DeWalt 735 desktop planer. It's probably the best desktop category planer that you're going to get, uh, so that's why so many of us have it. I would love a big daddy of a planer, but of course I don't have the space for it, so this is the best I'm going to get. But as good as it is, there are some things that annoy me about it, and I'm going to tackle that today in this video. So first thing, we're going to get rid of this dust port. Uh, it is horribly placed because your hose is exactly where your wood comes out. And so I've snagged my hose a ton of times with this. I'm going to replace it with one that's angled off to the side. It'll be 3D printed. It's printing right now. Uh, and I'll link that file so you can make one for free for yourself uh, down in the description below if you're interested in that. Uh, we're going to add some cable management. We're going to replace this big old handle over here with a smaller stubby one because this big handle gets in the way for me. So uh, I'm sure lots of people like the big handle. I do not. So I'm going to replace mine. And of course, we're going to replace the cutting head with a helical cutting head. Uh, my friends over at Elephus, they had provided my helical cutting head for my joiner. And uh, then they asked me, hey, you want one for your planer too? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elephus. Uh, helical cutting heads are awesome. Uh, so I'm going to do a step-by-step -step instruction on how to install that in here. I will warn you, though, it is a lot more involved than the joiner. And uh, so as we're taking all these pieces off, if you're following along with me, get a piece of cardboard, put it down on the floor, and that way you can put your pieces down and number it. Um, some sort of cataloging of your screws, because there's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to take off of here, and you don't want to lose it. So let's get into upgrading this machine today on Bittnerville. All right, let's install the cutter head first. I'm going to edit this very quick. Uh, that way I'm not wasting your time, so feel free to pause whenever you need to. To install the cutter head, you're going to need a small Phillips head, WD-40, a six millimeter wrench, preferably with a closed end, a four and five millimeter hex, blue Loctite, a snap ring tool, and a 24 millimeter socket. Remove the four screws on the top using the included wrench. Remove the top cover. Remove the three red wing nuts for the dust cover. To remove the dust cover, lift up, twist a little bit so that it detaches from back here and take out. We need to remove all of the blades and the blade uh, housings. To do that, we need to rotate the drum, but if you just try to push it, it locks into place. This spring-loaded lock at the end, you press down on it so that you can rotate the drum until it's straight up and down. Then use the DeWalt tool to remove all of the screws and the blade and housing for each side. DeWalt thought ahead and put two magnets on its wrench, and so it's so easy to then pull out your guard and your blade. Good job, DeWalt. Next, we're gonna take off this spring plate. Uh, there are two screws. I've taken one off. The reason why I already took one off is these have Loctite on it, and these are crazy hard to get off. Um, but they're also a really weird uh, inset for this screw, and I was really afraid that I was gonna strip it. So uh, it took me a while. I did it with a handheld screwdriver, but I got them both loose and coming off. There is also a spring right behind here. Remove the handle, hold the handle while you loosen the screw. Remove the four bolts for the side cover. Remove the side cover. Okay, so your next step is to remove the tensioner spring that's right here, but you'll notice I don't have one, uh, which was a huge surprise to me as soon as I opened up this machine that I'm missing my tensioner spring. Uh, so I'm gonna be ordering one of those. After you remove the tensioner spring, you then, using a Phillips head, uh, remove the idler right here. The whole thing will come off. Be careful not to strip out this screw. Well, in addition to missing my spring, uh, I did strip this screw that I told you not to strip. Uh, so I ordered a new screw in addition to this. Um, so be very careful, don't be me, and do this because now I have to get violent to uh, get this off of here. Yes! Ah, victory! Evil screw. Next, use a four millimeter Allen on these two bolts here. Make sure that when you take this off, you hold everything together uh, and you remove it as one piece and place it down on the table as one piece so that you don't have to reset this later. So 
So one piece together. Of course, as uh, we're doing this, make sure you're cleaning everything out. Uh, planers are a sawdust factory. Next, we're gonna remove the belt. Just go ahead and pull towards you. Make sure not to get your fingers jammed. As you pull towards you and roll it, it will come off. Place a piece of scrap wood inside the unit so that it holds the drum from being able to rotate. Loosen the nut with a number 24. Remove the pulley. There should be a key in here as well. There we go. Uh, so notice it didn't come off with the key. The key stayed, but I want to take the key off right now so I don't lose it. It's very small. This is a pair of snap ring pliers. They're pretty cheap, so if you don't have them, you might as well pick them up. I'm gonna insert it into these two holes here and squeeze to get this out. It's pushing out. Rotate the machine to the other side. We're now gonna remove the three bolts for the cover. Remove the two snap rings. Need to release the spring from the tensioner. This side actually still has its spring, so I'm very happy about that. Gonna remove the chain and sprockets at one time to keep them together. On the right shaft of the sprocket, there is a washer. Now it was stuck to mine when I removed it. I just wanted to point it out so you don't lose it. There are three five millimeter Allens on here, not including the one that the spring is on. Don't touch this one. So we're gonna remove these three and then we're gonna pull the box out, but not all the way. There's an additional snap ring right here. Remove that one. So on this side of the unit that has the gearbox, what we're going to do is take a scrap piece of wood, place it directly on the gear, and we're gonna hit it a couple times to get it loose. I ended up using a piece of hardwood uh, because even with the hardwood, it was really impaling this guy here. And uh, at least the hardwood held it a lot better. Now that I have this loose, it's time to slide this out to the other end. Mine was really difficult to get off. I ended up wrapping it in a towel so that I could safely hold it because it is sharp. And I ended up going down to a six millimeter in order to get this undone. And luckily we got it without rounding it off. Okay, we're all done with the removals. Uh, if you want to, you could keep this head. You could also dispose of it. Uh, you do not need the bearings or anything else after you have removed that uh, gear sprocket from the end. For attaching the uh, gear head to our new cutter head, make sure you use Loctite Blue, not Loctite Red. The stupid bottles look exactly alike except for this little guy right here. Make sure you do blue because it is removable. Again, note the blue color. There we go. Maybe a little too much, but it'll be fine. There we go. I'm gonna take my six millimeter wrench to tighten this. Make sure that you remove all of your cutting head blades from the unit before we install. The gearbox here where my finger is has a lot of grease inside of it. I'm just going to lightly get some on my finger and rub it around the bearing surface on this side and the other side. That way it's just gonna help lubricate the uh, bearing inside the housing. This last snap ring that we took off uh, towards the end, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in now before we go to put the cutter head in. Uh, and that way it's going to act as a uh, stop for when the cutter head is fully in place. I'm gonna now slide in our new Elephas cutter head by the attached uh, gear. You'll notice that this has a smaller bearing than the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and insert it in the exact same way that we took it out. In reverse, of course. Now, you'll notice that it did not come out this end. It only barely peeked out not fully in and that is because the very large bearing at this end needs to be hammered into place so using this right hand I'm going underneath the unit so that I can pick up the head and move it wherever I need to and then with my left hand I'm going to take the hammer 
and hammer it into place, stopping when it hits the ring on this side that we just inserted. So as long as your uh, clip goes in fine and sits within the groove, you know that you're set on both sides. It's now time to reinstall all the cutter heads. Before we move any further, uh, Elephus has their patented double layer cutter heads and it has an O in one corner. And so what I'm going to be doing is making sure that all of my cutter heads, since they're all brand new, or my cutter knives, uh, I'm putting the O in the same direction. That way, going forward, I know that uh, as I rotate those, I know which ones I've rotated because they've had a nick, uh, or once it gets all the way back around again, it's time to replace it. Go ahead and make sure you really torque them down uh, with your hand with the included tool. Our new Elephus cutting head is in with all of the uh, uh, double-layered carbide teeth. Uh, so it's spinning freely, looking nice, it's time to reassemble. On the side with the gearbox, I'm gonna put my finger in and take some of the grease and recoat on here, uh, just to make sure that we're getting it all in there. Uh, since we had to wipe that off when we were taking it out. I'm gonna place the gearbox back on, but I'm watching this to make sure that it inserts back into place three five millimeter screws. Place your spacer on the right side. Gonna reinsert the chain. It should be correctly uh, in position because we didn't take the gears off the chain. Reattach the tensioner spring. Reinstall both snap rings. Replace the cover with three screws. Insert the washer, key, and pulley. Place a piece of scrap wood in at the cutter head. You have your 24 millimeter bolt. Tighten it with a socket. Reattach the belt by spinning the pulley. Uh, check up here to make sure that you're properly seated first before you start this action. Replace the gears with chain. Screw in both four millimeter bolts with washer. Next, we're going to install the belt tensioner. However, when I was taking this apart, I completely destroyed and mangled this screw. I ended up having to use a Dremel tool to cut a line in it just so that I could get it removed. Uh, also, I was missing my spring in this section, so I ordered a brand new screw for this, uh, and I ordered a new screw. So we're gonna put this in right here. Reinstall the cover with four screws. Reinstall the wheel. You do not install this piece. Again, it doesn't fit anymore and it's not needed. Reinstall the dust shield by holding it up in the air, pushing in this direction, then rotating down. Insert the uh, hand torqued red screws to hold it in place. Put back on the lid with the four screws. Make sure to put your DeWalt tool back in its holder. I love tools that have holders for the other tools that it needs. Good job, DeWalt. Let's do our other upgrades on here. All of the rest of this stuff I just 3D printed. And uh, there are aftermarket parts that you can purchase online. Um, but honestly, with how cheap this and easy this is, um, I highly suggest getting a 3D printer if you don't have one because I'm upgrading all of my tools all throughout the shop with cool stuff like this. So we're gonna start with the dust port. There is a button here to release it. I use the tool to press in on it and then twist pull out afterwards. And then our new tool, our new dust collector port, goes right on in in the exact same way. You have to depress that silver button and then twist, and we're in position. There are four holes back here that are slotted for M5 screws, and so I 3D printed two of these. And we are just going to Screw them into these positions. So now I have some nice cable management when the unit is not in use. Lastly, I have this giant handle, and it's a great handle. It's sized well for your hand, but I'm gonna replace it with this small one. 
So I'm just going to use the uh, included DeWalt tool in here to unscrew the handle. Oh boy. And I'm just going to use the exact same bolt with my new 3D printed one. And this is definitely a me upgrade, which, hey, it's my tool. Uh, that's awesome. Not everybody's going to want this one. Um, but for me, this is going to work just fine to do that. Uh, and it's going to keep it from being hit by my cabinet when I bring it out. Well, I hope you got some good ideas for upgrades for your DeWalt 735. Uh, if there's any other ones that I didn't cover, please let me know down below. I will be doing another video later in the year where I replace the uh, bed wings and I do an elongated surface coming off of here to help reduce snipe, but that's gonna be a whole video into itself. So if you have any other cool ideas, maybe I can incorporate it into that video and share the wealth out there to everybody else. Uh, I have the 3D printer files linked down below. And of course, thank you so much to Elephus for providing the helical cutter head for this unit. Um, they do not pay for these videos in sponsorship. They just provide it. And I love the one that I have in my jointer. I've already started using this one uh, for another video. So uh, I didn't feel like elongating this one. If you want to see footage of me with nicely plain boards coming out, you can watch my next video, which is going to be on building bunk beds for my kids. Every single piece of wood goes through this machine and it comes out buttery smooth. So uh, it's a very nice cutting head. Check them out. They're a Taiwanese company and they've only been doing cutter heads since 1953. Uh, if you found this video informational and you liked it, please like and subscribe. It's what helps me grow this channel and make more videos. And of course, stay safe in the shop. I will see you in the next one.